As historic tensions rise between the nations of China and Taiwan, it was the UK's Foreign Secretary James Cleverly who repopularized an interesting angle on the debate. What if the biggest loser in a large-scale occupation of Taiwan by Chinese forces was, in fact, China itself? Geopolitics has never been more complex than it is now, especially in this case considering that China is a nuclear state and Taiwan is a key partner of the United States, which could counter China's numerically superior military with its own world-class military technology, training, and spending. One thing that is absolutely certain is that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would quickly spill out of East Asia in scope and likely trigger a cataclysmic war between several nuclear-armed global superpowers. But how did we get here? What makes the war between China, Taiwan, and all their respective allies such a looming possibility? And most importantly for this video, what makes figures like James Cleverly so certain that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan will lead to a complete Chinese collapse? First, some important context. What is the history between Taiwan and China, and why does it make some kind of military conflict feel almost inevitable? As with any sticky geopolitical situation, we need to untangle the mess before we can understand it. The first thing you need to understand is that Taiwan is an island nation with a population of around 24 million people off the coast of a much larger China, and it's been an independent nation since 1949. Taiwan is officially known as the Republic of China, or ROC and mainland China dubs itself the People's Republic of China, or PRC. How you feel about this probably depends on which side of the Taiwan Strait you ally with. Taiwan has a democratically elected government, but the PRC sees it as a kind of rogue state they hope to reunify with the mainland, using force if necessary. This approach to foreign policy is known as the One China Principle, and comparisons have been drawn to Russia's takeover of Crimea and the attempt at annexation of Ukraine. A lot of the differing interpretations between the two countries originated from a consensus formed in 1992 by negotiators from the Chinese Communist Party, the ruling party of the PRC, and the Kuomintang, which at the time was the ruling party of Taiwan. Both nominally agreed to the idea of a One China principle, with the issue being that each country believed themselves to be the One China in their own interpretation of the consensus. But even the name of the consensus is misleading as it would imply some kind of, well, actual consensus across all parties involved. The Kuomintang has always generally been sympathetic to the interests of Beijing, with the Kuomintang draft of the Taiwanese constitution not emphasizing the sovereignty of the ROC from the PRC. This line of thought is staunchly opposed by the other primary party in Taiwan, the Democratic Progressive Party, which currently rules the country with President Tsai Ing-wen as the leader. There was a kind of uneasy peace between the two countries until matters escalated when Tsai Ing-wen was elected as president in 2016. During one of her first speeches as president, she explicitly rejected the 1992 consensus and called for a revaluation of Taiwan's relationship with the mainland. In response, China cut diplomatic ties and escalated its military saber-rattling by flying fighter jets closer and closer to the island and escalating the aggression of its anti-Taiwanese sovereignty rhetoric. President of the PRC, Xi Jinping, has stressed the ideal situation for both nations is a one-country, two-systems policy, which would reintegrate Taiwan into the PRC while also allowing it some level of sovereignty, similar to the relationship between China and Hong Kong. But critics of Xi have understandably pointed out the PRC's recent crackdown on the freedoms of citizens in Hong Kong as a reason to believe Beijing's promises of Taiwanese sovereignty aren't necessarily worth the paper they're printed on. Global superpowers have been choosing both sides. Both the Trump and Biden administrations have shown an uncharacteristic closeness to Taiwan, with Joe Biden being the first president of the United States to invite Taiwanese representatives to his presidential inauguration, a powerful symbolic gesture that drew the ire of the PRC. The United States also had continued selling weapons to Taiwan and participating in joint military training exercises. Bipartisan measures have passed U.S. Congress to increase support for U.S.-Taiwan relations, and the U.S. government has lately been encouraging Taiwan to increase its defense spending. But Taiwan isn't alone in needing to increase its defense because you're also at risk of being attacked. That's right, there's a big, glaring hole in your own defense, and it comes from your data. And that's why we're so thankful for the sponsor of today's video, Delete Me. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information that's being sold online. Who's selling it, you ask? Data brokers. Those shadowy organizations compile information about you and your family, everything from your birthday, your phone number, court records, even your home address. All of this info and much more 
is often available to whoever is willing to pay, which opens you and your loved ones to the risk of being doxxed, harassed, or even attacked. There's a real danger to having that information out there on the web in the hands of data brokers, which is why I decided to use Delete Me. So how does it work? Once you sign up, Delete Me experts will begin finding and removing all of your personal information that's out there on the web. After seven days, you'll receive a detailed Delete Me report outlining all the different places your information has been found. But it doesn't stop there. Delete Me continues to keep you safe by scanning and deleting all your data all year, removing your personal information again from any place it's appeared every three months. When I saw my own report, I couldn't believe how many different sites my data was up on for anyone to come and purchase, and what was most surprising was how much of it there was. Multiple addresses, including my current one, phone numbers, and email addresses, you name it, it was out there. So don't wait any longer, try out Delete Me for yourself and see just how much of your own data is in the hands of data brokers. Just go to joindeleteme.com slash GEO and make sure to use my special code GEO for 20% off. You and your data will thank me once you do. Now back to China and Taiwan, another important symbolic gesture in this regard is the fact that the US regularly sends ships through the Taiwan Strait as a form of posturing demonstrating their presence in the area in a way that sends a strong message to the PRC. Things escalated even further with the involvement of two different high-ranking US politicians engaging in unprecedented acts of diplomacy with Taiwan. Former House Speakers Nancy Pelosi and Kevin McCarthy both engaged in diplomatic pleasantries with President Tsai. It probably won't be surprising to hear that the PRC views all of this as escalation and has responded accordingly with sanctions, rhetoric, and displays of military might. According to a 2021 report from the U.S. Department of Defense, the PRC is, quote, likely preparing for a contingency to unify Taiwan with the PRC by force while simultaneously deterring, delaying, or denying any third-party intervention, such as the United States. Needless to say, this is an incredibly concerning prospect for all involved. Debates have raged about when this military action is likely to take place, with predictions over the previous few years falling flat. In 2021, a key U.S. military leader in the Indo-Pacific projected a Chinese invasion of Taiwan by 2031. Other predictions have stressed 2049 as a potential date, in accordance with President Xi Jinping's rhetoric around the Chinese dream, the idea that by 2049, the centenary of the founding of the PRC, China will return to its historic greatness and become a major player on the world stage. Xi has directly said multiple times that the Chinese dream would be impossible without the reunification of China and Taiwan under the One China Principle. And as we've alluded to before, China is no slouch militarily. Not only does the Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, boast the largest number of military personnel on the planet, but it's also undergone an extensive military modernization plan over the prior decade. In 2019, a military white paper released by the PLA confidently stated that they would be able to, quote, resolutely defeat anyone attempting to separate Taiwan from China. Not exactly mincing words, though it is extremely important to take reports on a country's own army with at least a little pinch of salt, as propaganda is a key tool in everyone's foreign policy. Certain precursors to war have already begun, eerily shadowing the situation between Russia and Ukraine. There's been evidence of Beijing interfering in Taiwanese elections through coordinated disinformation campaigns and attempts to influence Taiwan's media. Taiwan's also accused Beijing of mounting thousands of cyber attacks against the country since 2010, restricting tourism to Taiwan and sailing warships and aircraft carriers through the Taiwan Strait in order to threaten and intimidate the island nation. Throughout all of this, Taiwan has always held one special bargaining chip that gives it economic sway amongst the rest of the world, and thus a good reason for countries like the United States to ensure stability remains in the region. Semiconductor chips. Taiwan is actually the world's leading manufacturer of these chips, which are essential to the production of everything from washing machines to military weapon systems. Corporations the world over need semiconductor chips like the ones produced in Taiwan in order to function, and a protracted Chinese invasion would upset the supply chain in an unprecedented fashion. Which brings us nicely to the real meat of this geopolitical conversation. On the dreadful day that the Chinese invasion of Taiwan does occur, if that day ever comes, what will be the impact? And why do people like the UK's foreign secretary believe this could be just as catastrophic for the PRC as anyone else involved in the conflict? James Cleverly has stated that any war between China and Taiwan will compromise the Taiwan Strait, one of the world's most important trade routes, 
which would not only negatively impact global trade, but completely collapse the Chinese economy by gridlocking their ability to conduct their own trade. Given that China's previously booming economy seems to have cooled down over the past few years, it puts them in a precarious position that could make engaging in an invasion of Taiwan potentially even more risky. Cleverly said, about half the world's container ships pass through these vital waters every year, laden with goods bound for Europe and the far corners of the world. Taiwan is a thriving democracy and a crucial link in global supply chains, particularly for advanced semiconductors. A war across the strait would not only be a human tragedy, it would destroy world trade worth $2.6 trillion, according to Nikkei Asia. No country could shield itself from the repercussions. Distance would offer no protection from this catastrophic blow to the global economy. That being said, many economists also believe that the perception of China's economy as a fragile house of cards is simply wishful thinking. According to Michael Pettis, professor of finance at the Guanghua School of Management at Peking University in Beijing, many analysts have concluded that China is on the verge of a crisis, but they do not understand China's heavily controlled financial system, in which regulators can restructure liabilities almost at will. China is very unlikely to suffer from a financial crisis or sudden collapse. Much more likely is many years of slowing growth as it grinds away at debt and slowly rebalances demands towards more consumption and less non-productive investment. However, Pettis' statement was made in a peacetime context. An invasion of Taiwan could be the spark that sets this tinderbox ablaze. A study from Charlie Vest, Agatha Kratz, and Riva Gojon, entitled The Global Economic Disruptions from a Taiwan Conflict, also offers some interesting insights on the devastating impacts of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. One particularly pertinent portion of the study states, every year banks provide $6.5 to $8 trillion in finance to help importers and exporters facilitate trade while goods are in transit. This short-term finance underpins as much as one-third of trade flows. In the event of a conflict between China and Taiwan, risk-averse global investors would pull back from lending activities, reducing the availability of trade finance and thus impairing international trade. This would mean that the entire global market would become paralyzed as imports and exports from countries across the world fail to make it to their destinations. With imports and exports at a standstill, entire industries and perhaps economies across the world would collapse, leading to a global financial downturn that would envy the Wall Street crash of 1929. Keen military minds may have noticed the phrase, even assuming no sanctions. To assume a lack of sanctions is extremely generous as a Taiwan invasion would inevitably activate a bevy of devastating sanctions from the international community. Let's take the consequences that the Ukraine invasion had on Russia as an example of the kind of severe financial sanctions that China might face if it invaded Taiwan. Russia experienced the assets of its central banks being frozen across Western Europe and the United States. Russian banks were effectively pushed out of the global banking community, and many countries such as the UK banned Russian firms from receiving loans. Russian citizens were even subject to depositing limits at banks across the EU. According to the UK government, Western countries cut off around $350 billion of Russia's $604 billion foreign currency reserve. Russian businesses were hit, limiting their ability to operate abroad, and several Russian oligarchs saw their considerable assets frozen in foreign banks. In the event of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan, it's not unreasonable to expect that these same financial consequences would hit China while Taiwan's allies were mustering their military response. While China's exports have given them a lot of international sway, they also lack Russia's oil wealth to fall back on, meaning that sanctions like these may hit them even harder. Another interesting wrinkle to all this data is the result of a war game simulation conducted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, an independent Washington think tank, earlier in 2023. The intention was simple. If a Chinese invasion of Taiwan broke out in 2026, who would win the conflict and what would be the overall cost to those involved? The CSIS ran the simulation an unprecedented 24 times just to make sure all the relevant data points were being properly considered. The first bombshell result of the report was that the invasion would not be a success for the PRC, but the cost to all involved would be horrific. According to CNN, extrapolating from an early preview of the report, a successful win from Taiwan was facilitated by four consistent factors across all models. Taiwan's ground forces must be able to contain Chinese beachheads, the US must be able to use its bases in Japan for combat operations, 
the US must have long-range anti-ship missiles to hit the PLA Navy from afar and en masse, and the US needs to fully arm Taiwan before shooting starts and jump into any conflict with its own forces immediately. But a victory doesn't mean a lack of fallout on all sides. The report stated, the United States and Japan lose dozens of ships, hundreds of aircraft, and thousands of service members. Such losses would damage the US global position for many years. According to the majority of simulations, 3,200 US soldiers would die in the opening weeks of the conflict, and the US would also lose two aircraft carriers and 10 to 20 large surface combatants during the battles in the Taiwan Strait. But this is not to imply that China would be unscathed. According to the CSIS report, China also suffers heavily. Its navy is in shambles, the core of its amphibious forces is broken, and tens of thousands of soldiers become prisoners of war. On top of all that, data from the study suggest that 10,000 Chinese troops would die, and 155 combat aircraft and 138 major ships would also be lost. Japan, who would side with the US and Taiwan, would lose over 100 combat aircraft and 26 warships, as well as suffer home territory damage from Chinese attacks on the US military bases on their soil. Taiwan, even though most models predict it retaining its sovereignty, would still suffer some pretty horrific losses under basically all scenarios. According to the report, while Taiwan's military is unbroken, it is severely degraded and left to defend a damaged economy on an island without electricity and basic services. The nation's army would likely suffer around 3,500 casualties, along with the destruction of their entire navy. It also goes without saying that given the majority of the ground fighting would be in Taiwan, infrastructural and collateral damage is basically inevitable. We've already highlighted comparisons made between the potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but the CSIS report and related experts also want to stress certain vital differences. Many academics and military officials have suggested that China may observe and learn from certain operational errors made by Russia, but if this report is to be believed, the same won't be true for Taiwan and the US. The report claims there will be no Ukraine model for NATO conduct in a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan, meaning that it'll be unfeasible to turn the invasion into an indirect proxy war, where Taiwan can be discreetly fed weapons and supplies. According to Mark Kansi and one of the CSIS project leaders, once the war begins, it's impossible to get any troops or supplies into Taiwan. So it's a very different situation from Ukraine where the United States and its allies have been able to send supplies continuously to Ukraine. Whatever the Taiwanese are going to fight the war with, they have to have that when the war begins. But let's not get carried away with the idea that war is an inevitability, because according to CSIS, it simply isn't the case. Why? Because the PRC is just as aware as anyone else that an invasion of Taiwan could be their ultimate ruin. Dan Grazier, a senior defense policy fellow at the Project on Government Oversight, also known by the oddly whimsical acronym POGO, echoed the sentiments of the UK's Foreign Secretary James Cleverly and his US counterpart, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, by saying that China's risk of total economic collapse may keep them from ever escalating to a full military invasion. Grazier stated, the Chinese are going to do everything they can in my estimation to avoid a military conflict with anybody. Grazier's estimation is based on the fact that China's economy rests on the undisrupted flow of imports and exports. Interrupting continuous trade would quickly wreak havoc on the Chinese economy, with exports from their manufacturing sector being the backbone of their international influence. And the importation of food and fuel is vital to keep the very engine of their economy chugging along. Any disruption to the flow of these goods would be catastrophic. Even so, there's another model predicting that an invasion of Taiwan might be the PRC cutting off its nose to spite its own face. The CSIS report stated, the Chinese leadership might adopt a strategy of diplomatic isolation, gray zone pressure, or economic coercion against Taiwan. Diplomatic isolation and economic coercion are self-explanatory, but gray zone pressure may require a bit more of an explanation. In geopolitical terms, the gray zone is everything between a state of true peace and active war cyber attacks, election interference, propaganda, and spies. In other words, everything China has already been doing. As we discussed earlier, while Taiwan's Democratic Progressive Party wants to preserve the sovereignty of the ROC, all it would take is one election to put a figurehead more sympathetic to the interests of Beijing into power and change everything. Why would Xi Jinping and the PRC risk it all in a dangerous and unpredictable war when they can maneuver their way into power far more delicately even if it extends the timeline. 
though an important caveat was added by Mark Kansian, who stated, Wars happen even when objective analysis might indicate the attacker might not be successful. Even global superpowers are made up of fallible people whose decision-making abilities are subject to the same biases and fallacies as anyone else. Even the knowledge of a potential collapse of their own economy and the devastation of their own military might not be enough to stop the People's Republic of China from trying to achieve the Chinese dream by any means necessary. Curious what would happen if the war did escalate? Watch what would happen if China and the US went to war hour by hour, or watch this video instead.